in this video I'm going to show you how you can create one of the most recognizable mechanized war machines of any sci-fi universe. Nope, I'm not talking about Gundams or AT-ATs, I'm not even talking about Titans. In this video, we're talking about the centerpiece of the Hideo Kojima Tactical Espionage video game series, Metal, Metal Gear. Gear. And we're going to go over everything you need to know to create your own. First, we need to discuss the design elements that set Metal Gear apart from the aforementioned mechanized walking giants. Since the art direction of Metal Gear is laser focused on maintaining a cohesive design aesthetic, that even if you saw one without any knowledge of the universe of fiction that it originates from, after a brief visual examination, you would at least be able to exclude it from having come from any of these other fictional universes. Metal Gear takes a lot of its design principles from the aesthetics of modern mechanized military war machines. Metal Gear Rex is largely a cross between a tank such as an M1 Abrams and an advanced modern naval maritime vessel. It was designed to be heavily armored and withstand munitions up to the fallout from nuclear weapons for which it is also equipped, while Metal Gear Ray with its subnautic capabilities has a greater focus on being a stealth infiltrator and thus shares more of its design aesthetics with a B-2 stealth bomber. Most Metal Gears are bipedal, meaning they walk on two legs, but without the support of arms. Thus, they maneuver in a prehistoric fashion similar to dinosaurs, or modern examples being large birds such as ostriches. This form of locomotion means that a Metal Gear design needs to have a strong center of gravity that is largely supported by the joints of the leg. Further examination of the animalistic traits of a Metal Gear design will be especially useful when it comes to animating it later on. Now that we've covered the design aesthetic, let's jump into Blender and start modeling. To get started, create a very simple 3D blockout of the design that you're going for. Now there's a lot of ways to do this, but I decided to start by using a skin modifier. To use this, I imported a cube and deleted everything but one vertice. I then applied the skin modifier which allows me to extrude out singular vertices into larger shapes. And by splitting off new vertices and marking them as the root in the skin modifier, I can block out all the major components of my design. And trust me, this goes fast. In about half an hour, I had created these three little guys here. Keep working in this low level of detail until you've blocked out all the major components of your design. Most of the parts that we're creating now are simply going to act as stand-ins for what we model later on. So fight the urge to start detailing stuff this early in the process. Once you're happy with your basic blockout, you can start separating out all the major components of your design so you can work on them holistically. This can include separating out the feet, the legs, the hips, head, and other major components. For the legs and the feet, however, I'm going to work on these objects through separate instances. So I'm going to create a basic cube, and then I'm going to hit Alt-D to duplicate a separate instance of that cube. In object mode, I'm then going to move the duplicate and rotate it into position on our blockout. Both of these instances will share all the same local transformations that you create in edit mode, but they won't share the same modifier stack, so you'll have to add the mirror modifier to both instances. For the instance that's rotated into position on our Metal Gear design, you'll have to add a second mirror modifier and set the mirror object to something that has an origin point at the center of your Metal Gear design, something like the hips or the head. This way, the first mirror modifier will symmetrize all the local transformations that we create to both instances, while the second mirror modifier will symmetrize it to our design and create the second leg. Also, if you plan to animate your 3D model, then there's something really important that you have to do. Under the mirror modifier, click on the dropdown that says data. For the first mirror modifier, the one that's symmetrizing the local transformation between both instances, make sure the checkbox next to vertex group is unchecked. But for the mirror modifier that is symmetrizing the leg onto your model, go into the data panel and make sure vertex groups is checked. Doing so will ensure that your weight paints are properly applied when you're going through the rigging process, and it will allow you to animate your Metal Gear without having to break the link between both object instances. From this point on, the modeling process is really pretty straightforward. 
But as I go about designing, I'm going to be giving more considerations to my animation and rigging concerns. So I'll constantly be considering how my parts are connected, how I'm going to set up the bone joints, and on which axis each part is going to rotate. Doing so will go a long way into improving the functional quality of your design. Although everything I'm doing relies on pretty basic box modeling techniques, I'll find a few places to start incorporating some boolean modifiers or curve objects. I strongly encourage you to take your time and play around with whatever tools and techniques you want to achieve the look that you're going for. So, moving on to the rigging process, I will say that I am not an expert when it comes to either animation or rigging, so I will list a number of resources in the description below. This includes Peric's Art of Effective Rigging in Blender, Blender Pirates, Hard Surface Animation and Rigging Tutorial Series, and the Royal Skies LLC YouTube channel. These are the three primary resources that have been most instrumental to me in helping me improve my animation and rigging skills. I'll start going about the rigging process by giving every major pivot point of our Metal Gear design its own bone. To do this, I'll be switching between the mesh and the armature. I'll go to the mesh and I'll hit Shift S and cursor to selected to place the cursor at my intended pivot point. I'll then go back to my armature bone and Shift S selection to cursor to place the head of the bone at that location. As you go about creating your armature, be sure to give all your bones clearly identifiable names denoting what transformations they control. This will make things a lot more organized and neater when you go about weight painting and assigning your vertex groups later on. When you're creating the bone names for the legs and the foot, however, be sure to add the dot .r or dot .l suffix to denote the left or right side. This way, when you've created the armature on one side, you can just quickly highlight the bones, right click, and hit symmetrize. Doing this will mirror the bones over to the other side, but it will also give the mirrored bones the opposite suffix. Once you've created your entire armature, you can go ahead and hide the duplicated instances of the foot and leg model. Then select all the parts associated with your Metal Gear design. Select the armature as the active object and hit Ctrl P and then parent the armature to your mesh with empty groups selected. This will create a list of empty vertex groups. You can go into your object data properties to see the empty vertex groups for all the bones that you created. Next, in edit mode, go to your viewport overlay options and make sure to hit the checkbox next to vertex weight groups. This will allow you to see your assigned vertex groups weights in edit mode. Now, when you assign a portion of your mesh to a vertex group with the weight of one, it will display as red in your viewport. However, this setting can be a little bit finicky when you're switching between different objects. So you might need to continually go to your viewport overlay options and toggle between the zero weight options of active and none. I also set up inverse kinematic bones for the legs and other modules. This essentially means that there is another target object that is directing the movement of these parts rather than a forward kinematic where the movement is guided from the center outward. I won't get into inverse kinematics extensively in this video, but essentially you can think of it as the hands that are puppeteering your Metal Gear design. But if you're happy with the results of your initial test wiggle, then go ahead and do a quick and sloppy UV unwrap of your entire mesh, and then import it into Substance Painter to start working on your texture painting. Now, there are a lot of ways to create amazing custom details of your own. Or you can just be like me and go completely overboard with the alpha decals that are available in Substance Painter by default. Substance Painter is fairly straightforward and easy to learn, and it's a lot like Photoshop if Photoshop was a video game. So go ahead and mess around with all those fancy tools until you finally create a texture that you kind of like. When you're done, bring it back into Blender so that you can start animating and maybe even create a little diorama for your Metal Gear to move around in. I kept things really simple. You could definitely put a lot more work into your little environment setup than I did. Once again, I used a technique of creating multiple instances of a single object with different modifier stacks, like this scaffolding which is just a single simple plane object with different modifier stacks, such as a solidify, array, and wireframe modifier. Next, you can start going through the process of animating, which is a lot of fun, but if you're like me, you probably found that you had a few bugs. But that's okay, it's easy enough to go back, make some fixes, and add some extra control and target bones if you need. 
The lighting setup was mostly created with a few area lights, including two that I also parented to the Metal Gear to create the searchlight eyes, and I also played around with a little bit of a smoke simulation just to add a little bit more of a cinematic effect. And having accomplished all that, we are now fully operational and ready to strike out on the world. And that just about covers the basics of everything you need to know in order to get a Metal Gear up and running. In the future, we'll do more in-depth tutorials covering individual steps in the process, such as texturing, rigging, and animating. We might even start showing how we can get our models working in a game engine such as Unreal or Unity. So I hope you found this video useful. Good luck on your own 3D projects, and I hope to see you in the next one.